Hi, this is uh, James Cook of the University of Maine at Augusta, and I'm recording this video to talk about um, some simple code that can be used to analyze YouTube uh, videos uh, and to look at the comment relationships uh, in between them. This is just the start of what you can do with uh, YouTube uh, uh, data, but it, it is a good start. So uh, here I am in my R Studio environment. I've installed R and R Studio, and for now um, I've maximized the um, code window because I'd like to talk about the code. Um, and the first thing I want to do is draw your attention to in lines five and six, code inspirations uh, with a missing I, inspirations. Um, we all when we're learning to code, look at other people's code to draw from examples. Um, the first uh, a link that you see there is uh, work by Christoph Sporlein, who has really created some nice examples of how to use a package called Boson SML, which um, can uh, analyze uh, Reddit and YouTube networks. Uh, it could do Twitter until that became prohibitive, prohibitively expensive. Uh, the second example, uh, excuse me, uh, actually the first link is a, a piece by uh, Robert Ackland and uh, Brian Gertzel and Francisca Borges, um, who are looking at some different ways of handling the same code. Um, then we have libraries up here. These are packages. Um, the tidyverse, which is a, um, a an attempt to create code that allows for working with data and visualization that creates uh, nice looking graphs. Um, iGraph, which allows for the creation of network uh, pictures, and then Voson SML, which is a, a, a package that. Uh, allows you to work with APIs, application programming interfaces. Um, here we'll be looking at YouTube. In order to uh, engage in this example, we're going to need to be able to have uh, YouTube API permissions all set up. Uh, in order to do that, you need to follow a very simple process. I've recorded a separate video. I'll post a link to that video in the comments to this video on YouTube. How circular can you get? But um, the first real command down here after the setup and the credits is uh, to uh, get some authentication, the OK from YouTube itself to go in and take a look at the public data. Uh, it's important to emphasize this is already public facing information, but we're gonna gather it into a data set. And um, the authentication here is for YouTube. That's why the option YouTube, options are always in parentheses for our uh, commands. And the API key, here it's my key. I've uh, created a variable called my key, which is not visible on screen because you never want to share your API key with other people because they can do mean and nasty things with them. But the format for you would be um, to type in in quotes something like, you know, some random text scr uh, scribble that um, the uh, YouTube API will output for you a really long set of numbers, uh, symbols, and letters. Um, and that's your API key. Um, I've saved it in a, a secret um, a variable called my key here. Um, but you'd want to put yours in quotes where the, the text my key appears here. Then you want to go and you want to look at a video. Uh, and the folks who wrote uh, votes on SML have done a really nice job of making it easy. All you have to do is find a video on YouTube and then cut and paste in the URL, which you can see on line 10 here. Um, this is a video regarding uh, the Milgram experiment. Uh, Stanley 
Milgram experiments. Um, uh, let me show you what video that was. Um, I believe that's right here. Yes. This is the Stanley Milgram um, experiments. Um, and it is a, a 1962 documentary. Uh, Stanley Milgram created uh, chalk um, uh, uh, experiments in which he attempts to enforce conformity. So um, this is a whole other social science uh, interesting uh, experiment, but it's been posted on YouTube is the point. And there have been 803 comments here. You could scroll down and you could read them all and you'd notice a few things. Uh, first of all, there are the initial comments, right? Uh, such as this guy at 10 minutes is an absolute star. This is someone who said, no, it's not essential for me to shock someone just because an authority figure says so. But then you'll notice that there are 15 replies. What this creates is a structure of comments and then commenters referring to other commenters, right? So pretty cool. What we're gonna do though, right now, is not just read these, but we're gonna take a look at the structure of the comments themselves. What's the pattern of the relationship of the comments? To do this, we are first going to enter the ID of that video, which is uh, right here in line 10. And then we're going to run a command that in the Voson SML package is collecting the data uh, regarding the original uh, video post and then the comments. Now I've set up a few examples uh, of uh, parameters. First of all, we're using the command collect um, as a, and we're using the authorization right that's up here this which is called YouTube auth okay and then we're going to collect using that authorization what are we going to collect video ID which is already up here in line 10. The maximum comments is 900. I set that because I'd like all those comments. Be careful if you go much larger, uh, you may blow up your computer and uh, blow up R. Um, and then I don't want um, the maximum verbosity of information because I'm gonna do a simple analysis. I don't wanna write the results to a file right away, um, but I do uh, want to show you that we will get a, a resulting data set. And then uh, I'm gonna engage in the command uh, actor graph, uh, and then that actor graph is a variable that is uh, going to be an iGraph network object. Uh, and it is going to uh, start with the YouTube data, and then it's gonna create a, an actor-based network that is of individuals who are commenting to one another. Uh, okay, and then we'll have a network that is uh, interpretable using the iGraph network language. I'm gonna show you in uh, line 16, we could simply plot this um, graph, but it's gonna be a mess. So then we're gonna plot it and um, we're gonna take care of the mess a little bit by taking the names of the individuals who are commenting, the official YouTube uh, garbledygook names that are much too long as you'll see, and we're just gonna replace them with a period. We're gonna make the vertex sizes a little smaller, uh, and we're gonna give them a color according to closeness centrality, where closeness centrality refers to how far the um, node tends to be from other nodes in the network. Now, right, the, the closest node to most of the others is gonna be the one in the middle of the discussion network, which is the original uh, poster of the video. And then there are people who respond to others and those comments uh, go outward in uh, starting from closeness and then getting a little far from each other as people go into the weeds and different discussions. So we wanna give them different colors so we can see that structure. And then I'm gonna use a layout, a Fruchtman-Rheingold visualization, which just basically means 
put the nodes that are um, connected to each other close to each other. And the ones that aren't connected to each other, let them drift far away from each other. We're going to calculate the density of the network and the diameter of the network, which is the largest distance in the network. And then I am absolutely lifting um, from uh, 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 these two sources up here at the top a plot in which we're looking at how many people um, give how many comments. Um, and that's a, it's a frequency chart, and we'll take a look at that. But um, you can take a look at this, um, the, the, the text of this uh, code, uh, and pause the video and check it out a little bit more. But I, I'd just like to show you what it does by doing what you do with code in R, which is to, uh, in the R Studio, the drop down menu, uh, run to code, run region, and let's run all. Now, when we do this, uh, the console window is popping up which is showing us uh, a little stop sign here in the upper right of the console window that's in the lower left, which means uh, it's still running. It should be a go sign, shouldn't it, to indicate that it's still going, and maybe a stop sign to indicate that it's stopped, but no, that's not how it works. But really, you'll be impressed by how little time it takes for um, on my five, six-year-old computer here, which is not that high-powered, to uh, go out and grab all this information using, thank you very much, YouTube folks, the um, API that allows me uh, official permission to do so. And then you'll see that the lines are changing as it runs through these commands. And then in the lower right, you're going to start to see a mess, which is that first uh, plot and then other plots that follow it. Now, when uh, we have three plots or, or three graphics that have been generated as outputs here. Um, in order to look at these, we can, uh, in the lower right, you see the, the third plot is there. And then you'll see a blue arrow. You can scroll through those by clicking the arrows. Okay. And so let's take a look. It'll take, there we are. It, I just scrolled too much. Um, this is the first plot where we're just trying to plot it as a graph, and it's just a, a blue mess with a little bit of orange in it because the um, the comment uh, IDs in the raw YouTube data are just a series of strings of gobbledygook, and there's so many of them, there are over 800 of them, they all overlap. So what we need to do is take them out, and I, did, I, I replaced them with a, a period, and... When I did that, then I made the nodes also smaller, and I made the color based on um, the centrality uh, in, in, in closeness uh, to other nodes in the network that shows these rings of uh, commenting. Let's um, take a, a look at that. Um, so in the middle, there's this central node, which is the <laughs> that's the original video. And then there's some initial individuals who uh, pro provide a first comment. And then there are those that respond in that uh, next sort of concentric ring to those first comments. And then those are individuals who respond further. Um, every once in a while, you will see as you move out, there are some individuals who are engaging in multiple conversations at the same time, but the overall structure that we can see in this network is one of initial comments, responses to the initial comments, and a, a smaller set of responses to the responses. Very interesting. Um, we also, scrolling back out to um, this frequency table, can see that most people, if we're doing a frequency account, um, over 600 of the 800 plus commenters um, left just one comment. And uh, a, a relatively small number of individuals, that's, that's this first bar, relatively small number of individuals uh, engaged in the conversation more deeply, leaving multiple comments. And, and, and so it quickly goes down. The last thing I'd like to show you today um, is that um, when we get this YouTube data, it's not just network data. 
you can see in this upper right hand corner that uh, data uh, and variables and things like that have been stored so that we can look at them closer. And you can see this YouTube data and it has 755 observations of 12 variables. So let's click on that. And when we do, uh, let's make this uh, again large. You can see over here uh, in our original tab, that we have a classic data set format in which cases are in rows, that is individual comments, and then we have variables in um, columns. And we can see the names of those who are leaving comments, and we can see the text of those comments and look at the text of those comments, right? Um, really interesting stuff, some of which, as in row 18 for me as an English speaker, are indecipherable. Um, some of which, as in row 15, contain emojis, so graphic elements, but most of which are text. And one of the things we could do in a further video, which we won't do in this video, just to keep it limited, is to run some analysis of sentiment um, and content. And there are further uh, packages that uh, are available in this combination of R and RStudio, this free analysis software that can um, compare the, the words and the text that is used to dictionaries that um, have graded the meaning of those, the positive sentiment, negative sentiment, indications of uh, even uh, for dictionaries, things like anxiety and anger. Uh, and, and we could, if we wanted to, take a look at how in that network there might be zones of positive sentiment regarding the Milgram experiments uh, for this example video or negative sentiments for this uh, uh, particular video. This is the power of um, using a computer program. Uh, again, I'm standing on the shoulders of giants, the folks who wrote these packages and wrote um, the uh, vignettes or explanations of how the code works, um, but you can do that too. And with a relatively um, small set of lines of code, really not that much, you can really understand something as seemingly um, inscrutable as a YouTube video in a really new light.